What's up Dragon Nation, I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Space Engineers. Last episode we were working on power. This episode we're going to go into the next step. We already got a base, we already figured out the power. I also figured out that I had to add two more batteries because one battery only gave me about an hour's worth of power. But I think the three batteries should be enough, I don't know, we'll find out. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for the sun to come out from behind the planet. So we should have plenty of power. But the next step that we need to go through is we're going to need to be able to get more resources a little bit faster. Now the way we do that is by building a small miner. I have a couple different designs that I regularly use, but the one we're going to go after today is the one that holds a little bit more cargo capacity. Uh, it's been a while since I've built it, so it might take me a minute to remember, but I think we should figure it out. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this started. Alright, so now that it is fully dark, I think the sun is... Well, it's not behind the planet yet, but it's getting there. But it's down enough to where, or down enough over the horizon of the asteroid, that it is no longer producing power, uh, power to the solar panels. So what I want to do is I want to check the batteries and see how much time I have. 15 hours. What? That's kind of weird. When I only had one battery, I checked it before I started, uh, before I built the other two, and it said I only had one hour. But now all of a sudden I have 15. Yeah, there's some weird-ass math going on there, but hey, 15 hours, plenty of time, I guess. But yeah, we also got the gravity generator built. I went around, found all the resources that we are going to need. As you can see, here's the GPS. And one that I did finally find is uranium. It actually took me a really long time because apparently uranium is more rare than it used to be. And it took me all these asteroids to find it. And I think it was actually, well, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I can't remember how far away it is. Uh, the first asteroid that I found or went to had platinum. So that one's weird because usually platinum is hard to find as well. Uh, the next one that I had a lot of trouble uh, finding was cobalt and before that gold. So I was able to find them, but I don't have a whole lot of those resources in the asteroids. Yeah, there it is. It's about 17.27 kilometers away. Luckily, it had uranium and cobalt, both of which I was looking for. It's actually kind of weird. Uh, it used to be that asteroids would have multiple resources on them, but I guess it's not the case anymore because almost every single asteroid I went to only had one resource on it. But I didn't have a very powerful... Actually, I didn't have a uh, detector at all. The only detecting equipment that I had was on my hand drill. So there probably could be more resources on the asteroid. We'll have to figure that out once we have a more powerful detector, which we should have by the end of this episode. So the miner that I want to build is one I've built before, and it's a really good miner. It just, it has a... Yeah, that one keeps popping up. I need to find... I forget what it says, but that, uh... See, down here we have the Pirate Raider, and then there's another one that keeps popping up. And people have been telling me I need to go figure out what that is. I need to go see it. And hopefully here pretty soon we'll be able to get a uh, fighter. So I could go ahead and go check those things out without having to worry about too many enemies. But yeah, what we need to do today is we need to get more resources. I did get a bit. I I filled up my personal inventory with uh, completely full of each ore. So I went out to an asteroid, filled up my inventory with one ore, brought it back, went to find the next one, and just kept going back and forth. It took me about two hours. Luckily, I was finally able to find uranium, which we have at least enough for this episode. 
Uh, for the mining ship, it's not going to take that long. We'll see how much power it actually gives us. But, yeah, we should have everything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I think we're good. So, this miner has one large cargo container. It also has one medium. And since we did find uranium, we can go ahead and use a reactor for power. Now, another thing it also had that I don't know if I'm going to use was ejectors, so it could uh, eject stone out the back. You know, I think we could use it, because now that we found the other resources, I don't think I'm, we're going to work with stone anymore. We could go ahead and get rid of that. Because with all the stone that's in the world, we uh, might fill up our station with the uh, gravel, which is what I don't want to do. But anyways, let's try to figure this out. I, like I said, I haven't tried to build this in a really long time. Oh, last time I built this was my last live stream, which was probably like a year ago, maybe even more than that. All right, let's just go ahead and get a little bit of height so we don't have to worry about trying to reach underneath and weld stuff up. I think that, uh, let's go one more, screw it. All right, I think that should be good enough. Now, the main problem you always have when starting a new ship is figuring out which block to start with. I usually start with the biggest block and try to orientate it whichever way I need. That way, I can figure everything else out from there. So with this one, what we're going to need is a small access point on the back and I also need one in the front, but we need to go ahead and switch. There we go. That'll work. Then what I need is a large access on the bottom for a connector. So yeah, right like that. Let me go ahead and get this thing welded. At some point, we also need a welding ship to make this, ooh. I'm kind of worried that I'm gonna hit those, uh, Solar panels. Yeah, I might have made it just a little too high. I think we should be fine though. So let's see what I needed real quick. Production computer motor display. So construction, computer, motor, display. Let's just go ahead and get 30 of those. I think that's pretty much all we're going to need. Alright, so as you can see we have large access on the bottom for a connector. Uh, front we have small access. And in the back, we have a small access. Now, this is going to be a miner. It's only going to have ore in it. So we don't need to worry about passing things through because all ore passes through the small uh, access point. So what we need to do first, if I can remember how to build the damn thing. All right, so what we're going to need is I need conveyors that come all the way back. Because what we're going to have is ejectors at the back that eject stone. So let me see. I do have mods added. And if you guys look on the uh, my Steam profile, you should be able to find the collection of all the mods that I am using at the time. But I think I might actually add more. Alright, let's see. It, come on turn there you go we might actually get more because there's a few that people have been recommending that I actually want to try out one of them is I have been using Taladin's inventory manager and somebody told me about another one called Isis which I didn't know had automated assembler control I thought it was just an inventory sorting system but yeah, if it has automated, because the thing about Talent and Inventory Manager is it can be kind of confusing when you're trying to figure out how to use it. But apparently Isis, I looked it up and it just automatically does stuff for you. But yeah, we're definitely going to try that out and see how that works. Alright, so let me go ahead and get these placed. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is... I'm trying to save space. What we're going to need now is a medium cargo container. 
so let me get this in and I'll show you what I mean. Right, like, no, let's go this way. Screw it. Now I do, oh, yep, too far. Now I do have an access point right here with the conveyor junction, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pass a uh, conveyor system all the way Energy back, low. all the way to the back of the ship. Power low already? Damn. And when I first built this ship, I was trying so many ways to figure out how to do that. And this just seemed to work the best. So it's one of those uh, designs that may not be too efficient, but it, come on, may not be too efficient, but it does work really well. Jesus. Maybe I should stop talking and actually pay attention to what the hell I'm doing. All right, there we go. So with the conveyor junction, we have an access on the bottom of the cargo container. So now all we have to do is run the conveyors all the way to the back and we don't have to worry about access points for the rest, which is uh, going to be a reactor. Yeah, we're not using the times 20 arc reactor because unfortunately I do have to make the uh, power cells for that and they take a little bit more resources and they take a whole lot more time as well all right so let's go ahead and get the reactor connected and there we go so now that we have the reactor the next thing we're gonna need is I want to put a jump drive on this thing now, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that you can't, in vanilla, you can't put a jump drive on a small ship. Luckily, I have a mod, I think it's a small ship mega mod pack, I think is what it's called, which now allows me to put a jump drive on a small ship. So I can go ahead and make things a little bit quicker, just jump from asteroid to asteroid. So what I need to do now is I need to run the conveyors energy all the way to the critical. back. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some energy real quick. Just to shut her up. Alright, so what I'm going to need is I'm going to need to leave a gap in between the jump drive and the uh, conveyors for the ejectors. Because I need to put a remote uh, antenna and a detector in the back. Now the way I used to have this when I first built it was I had, the reason I had a smaller cargo container like this was because I put uh, solar panels uh, around the outside, but that doesn't quite work out anymore because it kind of changed, well you'll see once we get this whole thing built. So two, now what I'm going to need is, uh, we're going to need conveyor sorters to pull just the stone because I don't want to eject anything else. Where do I have it? Number four? Yeah, there we go. So that's going to give us our gap in between the jump drive and our conveyors. And then we're just going to put conveyor junctions. I just have to remember where all I put them. I think it's do like that and then two one is that right I think that's right there we go now we have conveyor junctions and we just need to grab an ejector There we go. Now it's a lot of ejectors, but that's okay because we're going to be drilling a lot of stone at some point. So it's a good idea if you're using ejectors to have a ton of them just to get rid of the stone as quickly as possible. Because one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to go from one asteroid to the other while you're still ejecting stone. Because when you turn on your inertia dampeners, 
the stone is gonna collide with you. So you want to be careful of that. Alright, so now that we got that, we can go ahead and start with the thrusters in the back. Now, of course, I do have a mod. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did change it. They call them engines now. Uh, what we're going to go with is... Let's go with Tier 3. So, this is Tiered Engine Super Pack, I do believe it's called. So what we're going to need is these two right here. So we're going to need the straight one, or the flat head. And then the angle head. What is it called? Oh, slope. Yep. Alright, all we're going to do is we're going to put eight facing backwards. Let me go ahead and turn that. I need large steel too, don't I? Yes, I do. Alright, let's try this again. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to have uh, side and upward and downward facing thrusters on the back and the front. But I need to get the cockpit and everything else uh, built before I can put those thrusters on. Might be a good idea to go ahead and... No, I should have some room. So now what we're going to do is, there's an upward, downward, downward, or left, no that's right side, right? Now we get the downward. Down, down, and now the left side. Jesus, come on, thrusters, work with me. And now the la last upward one. So the rest of this, all I need to do is weld that up real quick. Uh, it might be a good idea before I disconnect the ship to go ahead and let ev all the battery... Uh, not the battery, the jump drive. Let that thing charge up. But now what I need to do is... I can't remember if I had oxygen on this thing or not. I think I did, but I think I just had oxygen tanks. I didn't have an oxygen generator. Now the main reason for that is I hate the sound of the oxygen generator. And it, it's annoying as hell and it does not shut up. But here comes another mod. Let me see if I can find it. This is the azimuth oxygen blocks. Uh, what it gives you is a one by one azimuth oxygen tank and a one by one azimuth oxygen generator. So all we're going to do is, they do act like conveyors as well. So we're going to go ahead and put two on there. That should give us enough oxygen for quite some time. Now what I'll do is every time I uh, connect this to a station that has an oxygen generator, it will fill those oxygen tanks. So I don't really need an oxygen generator. Now next thing I'm going to need is, we're going to use conveyor junctions. Because I need to close up some holes and I need to be able to connect things later on. Oh, nope. Right there. Is it three? I think it's three. Yeah, one, two, three. I think so. And then we're going to do the same thing here at the bottom and at the top. Go ahead and get rid of this one real quick. Alright, next thing we're going to need is we are going to need some gyros. Now, I can put uh, eight gyroscopes on this ship, but for right now, we're just going to go with four. No, I'll put all eight on. I could, I could just shut them off whenever I need to. And then the next thing we're going to need is the drills. Now, this thing is going to have eight drills. It's going to be a lot, so it's going to cover a big area. We're going to get a lot of resources really quick. But it's not as small as my other one, so we do need to be careful that we don't crash it into anything. So the cool thing about the drills... Let me go ahead and get these ones placed and I'll show you. Is the axis points on these drills. There's one right here in the back, and then there's one on the side, on this side, and one on the other side as well. So I can actually connect them to one another so I don't have to set up the conveyor system. 
That way I can go ahead and put like say there was a conveyor system only or an access point only in the back of the drill I would have to run a conveyor system to it which I could actually use that space for something else so it's actually kind of cool all right let's go ahead and get the other ones we got two more come on go down there you go Did I just... Yes, I did. Uh, Alright, one more. Alright, let's get rid of this one. Alright, so there you go. Eight drills. It should be enough to cover a lot of space, and we should be able to get a lot of ores. And then what we're going to have... I can't put it in right now, but... I will be, after I weld everything up, is a cockpit right here. Now, right on the front of that cockpit, we're going to add... Uh, cameras, lights. Also, we're going to add another camera after we get the connector. Uh, there's going to be a camera right here. Then what I need to do is right in the back, right back here. We'll add antennas, detectors, and a remote control block. That should be everything, and then I have to worry about the armor. So yeah, what I need to do right now is I need to go ahead and get everything welded up. It's going to take me a little bit of time. I don't want to waste your guys' time because we still need to go mining. So let me go ahead and get this done real quick. When I do, we'll be right back. Alright, now that we have the ship finished, I went ahead and painted it as well. Now, when I put this on the Steam Workshop, there's going to be three mods, I think I said. The azimuth oxygen blocks. The... Ruster engine super pack, tiered engine super pack, and the small ship make a mod pack for the jump drive. Now, if I remember correctly, that's the only mods that I have on this right now. Now, you could build something like this without the mods. I mean, you could just get rid of the jump drive, it's not absolutely needed. Uh, the thrusters, you could switch them out for vanilla thrusters, and the amount that this thing has on it do pretty good they do pretty well but i went ahead and added the thrusters because yeah i just hate vanilla thrusters so much and as far as the oxygen blocks you could probably try to figure out a better way of putting oxygen in this or just carry around bottles i mean the oxygen uh the oxygen tanks with the o2 generators take up so much space it's probably just better just to have uh, the tanks on your personal inventory instead of changing the shape or the size of the ship that's just my opinion of course other people are going to have their own opinion but it should work pretty well now we do have everything set up I went ahead and went into the control panel and I think let me double check and make sure that the sorters are set up so the only thing we had to do with the sorters is whitelist and drain all and then stone. And then all of the ejectors should be, yep, collect all and throw out. So we should just be getting rid of stone because the sorter is preventing anything else from coming through. While we're at it, let's go ahead and check the jump drive and see how much charge that thing actually has. Ah, looks like it's fully recharged. Awesome. Alright, anything else I need to do real quick before we start this out? I think we're good. I just need to make sure I don't hit the solar panels. Uh, but yeah, we should be alright. I mean, we got lights, we got the cameras. Uh, remote control block, the antenna, detectors on the back. So yeah, I think we're ready to go do some money. Uh, so, let's see. GPS, the first thing we're going to go for is... Yeah, let's go for the cobalt and the uranium. All right, let's see how this thing moves. Not bad. Pretty good for mining. All right, let's go ahead and try a jump. So what we're going to need is a uh, jump drive. Where are you at? Damn it, jump drive. There you go. And then we'll hit jump. Then we'll go into control panel, tell it where to go. 
which we want to go to uh should be at the bottom right here and then select all right let's go ahead and jump we should be far enough away i think if i remember cor uh, correctly it's uh, five kilometers it has to be at least more than five kilometers to jump to it which i think is every single asteroid and the weird thing is is something i didn't notice it used to be you would jump one or yeah one kilometer away from a jump point but it looks like now it does two Yep, there's uranium, there's the cobalt. The azimuth ore detector is hardly detecting them. That's why that's a really handy thing to have. All right, let's see what the stopping speed is. Uh, not a half bad. Eh, a little bit on the slow side, but yeah, it kind of seems like they nerfed the mod again. Uh, used to be that this thing would stop on a dime with the uh, tier two. But now I'm using tier 3 and it still takes a little while. So this node right here is the only uranium I've been able to find so far. Now it's not a whole lot and it's not going to take this miner too long to dig through it. Yeah, this thing... Damn, stop already. Shit. It's not going to take too long to go through uh, this node right here. But it should get us enough uranium to last us quite some time. Also, we're going to be still using solar panels. I promised I would use solar panels as long as I could, so we'll go ahead and do that, even though I really hate them. But let's go ahead and dig into this thing and see just how well it digs. Come on. Oh, yeah. Might help if I actually... There we go. It's digging into it. Oh, a little too fast. All right, let's go ahead and see how much we have. So all I want to get is about... Yeah, I think we have enough. Uh, let's see, how much was it? Oops, hi, inventory. So it looks like we have... It's about five... Six. Six thousand? That's it? Oh, I thought it was more. So what I want to do is I want to try to get about a hundred thousand of each ore. So yeah, we need to go ahead and grab a little bit more of the uranium. So this is going to take me quite some time to get all these resources, especially stuff like gold and uranium. Also the platinum as well. So... People want to see the mining in this game. I don't know why people like them so much. But I guess what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a little bit of a montage, get all the ore that we need, and then get our asses back to base.
welcome back. So we were able to get all the ore that we need. There was a few things that I didn't need to grab. I don't need magnesium, don't need stone. And I didn't grab any ice, but as you can see, everything is almost full, even the drills. Well, actually I can still hold a lot more in the drills. But we were able to get every, every resource that we need for uh, building, except for magnesium and uranium. Uranium, I was only able to get like 50,000 because it was just taking way too long. Let's see if we can go ahead and dock this thing up. And when we dock it up, that means the refinery should start running so we can go ahead and double check the power. There we go. Alright, so we'll go ahead and let that thing sit. It should also refill with oxygen. Uh, I don't know if it'll do it from that connector. I think we might have to connect it to the other one for it to gather any oxygen. But now that the refinery is processing, let's go ahead and get the assembler as well. Uh, let's see. Let's make about a thousand steel plates. Uh, control shift. There it goes. Now that everything is processing, let's go ahead and check the power on the batteries. Fully recharged in eight minutes. So it's charging. <laughs> All right. Where the hell is the sun? And which solar panels are getting power? All right, the sun is down there. None of the solar panels are all oh, because of the reactor. That's right. All right, hold on. All right, okay, reactor, let's go ahead and shut that off. And as long as we still have the connector connected, the uh, ship should get power. Now that the reactor isn't running, let's go ahead and check this out. So yeah, only two hours, but let's see. Uh, store powered is 2.5 megahertz per hour. Megawatts, not megahertz. <laughs> Jesus. So, that's only about a little bit more than three quarters of the power. So, it looks like maybe three batteries won't be enough. But what we should do is go ahead and recharge. Nah, I don't think we needed to recharge it. Because it was only going to take a few minutes to recharge them anyway, so I don't think it was a whole lot of power that we're missing. But yeah, it should be a little bit more than three quarters of each battery. So each battery is going to give us about a third of an hour. No. God, my mouth sucks. A little bit. Screw it. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm too tired for my brain to work right now. But yeah, two hours. So I might have to add... So when I had the first battery, it gave me one hour. I added two more batteries, it gives me a little bit more than two hours. So if I add two more batteries, that should give me three. But I don't think we're going to need three because the sun... might be coming up pretty soon. We might be able to get some uh, solar power here in a minute. But what I want to see is how the rotor, the automated rotors, actually work. Or no, they're called the uh, smart rotors. I want to see if after the dark, if they automatically turn towards the sun. They should be getting... Well, no, because the rotors should not turn until the sun is shining I think the sensor for it is that right there so this rotor should not be able to turn until the Sun is about right there well let's line it up yeah so I think about right here so we still have quite some time for that we probably have like another hour but yeah I'll check it out and see just how well it works Another thing I need to double check is to make sure that the solar panels are not going to hit. Yeah, they're going to be close. Ah, damn it. Well, at least we'll get a good explosion. Screw it. It's fine. 
I like to see uh, something blow up. But anyways. So we got our miner. We got a bunch of resources. It should be enough resources to get everything built that we need up here. Now at some point we are going to build a mega miner. Which we might have to get a little bit more iron. But as far as everything else I think we should. Well no gold too. It's always iron and gold that I need to get more of. But yeah, we'll uh, get a Mega Miner built, get a station built, but I think in next episode, the first thing we need is, since we are building big, I'm going to need something to weld up that has a little bit more inventory space, so we should build a construction ship. I'm kind of deciding if I should go ahead and do the rotor method that I did on the planet, or if I should just make dedicated ones. No, let's go ahead and try the rotor. We're in space, so it should work a little bit better than the one we built on the planet. But yeah, next episode, we'll go ahead and build ourselves a constructor. Uh, we got a lot of work ahead of us. But anyways, we'll worry about all that in the next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe. All that good stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.